What's up, guys? Doom Wake here, and welcome back to some post ban pioneer. New format? Same old snake. Before we continue, be sure to like, subscribe, let me know what you thought down below in the comments section. And uh, number one question, have you guys been enjoying the post ban pioneer format? I gotta tell you, I've been having a blast playing it. Now, part of that might be because of the lack of Phoenix opponents that I've been finding, but I'm still having a good time, and that's the most important part. And speaking of good time, Rotten Mouth Viper, I'm sure if you've watched any of the previous videos on this card, you know my fascination with this with this absolute beast uh, or snake or elemental of a card. And this is kind of what I perceive the new Rakdos Sacrifice deck to look like. Now, I will say that the more popular version of Sacrifice that's been kind of popping up over the last couple of weeks, you know, since the ban, is ones involving Yigra, Eater of All. So Yigra is a card that lets you go infinite with double cauldron familiar. There's these versions also have the talents. Let me see if I can, I'm just going to pull that up real quick. We're doing it live. So yeah, there is, which is, this is a card that I initially was not super fond of, but the more I play with and against this card, Scavenger's Talent, I'm kind of getting impressed. So it might be something that I want to kind of incorporate into the Rakdos shell, even sans the Yigra combo. But the concept here is we're utilizing Rotten Mouth Viper, and essentially we have some ways to generate multiple permanents. Voldaren Epicure is kind of specifically the one that I want to highlight here because most sacrifice lists play Unlucky Witness, which I think is a better card than Epicure. But if you are choosing to kind of get more permanents onto the battlefield for Viper, Epicure does that a lot better than Unlucky Witness. You're probably used to most of these cards if you've seen a Sacrifice deck. We have the Familiars, the Ovens, Thought Seizes, Fatal Pushes, Deadly Disputes, Blood Scythe Harvester, Mayhem Devil, that's kind of your big payoff. And then, I mean, we're playing a red deck and it's Pioneer, so we have four Fables. Gotta play him. Really, this is kind of what Rakdos Sacrifice looked like prior to the bans. The only introduction that we have here is Rotten Mouth Viper. To make room for that, we've kind of trimmed on, like we trimmed a Fatal Push, trimmed a Cauldron Familiar. These decks sometimes play a Kroxa that I've cut, so that's kind of what got cut to make room for the Vipers. As far as the mana base is concerned, nothing too fancy, just, you know, Pathways, Blood Crypts, Den of the Bugbears, Hives, one Soak and Zon, one Takanuma, that's kind of like your utility lands of choice. And unfortunately for those arena gamers out there, there is one Urborg. Uh, obviously, obviously, you could play it without it if you wanted to port this into Explorer. But, you know, when are we going to get Urborg on Arena? That's what I'm asking. As far as the sideboard is concerned, we have our trusty Elk Companion, Gigant of the Wellspring, a couple of Goblanks for Phoenix, an additional Fatal Push for the creature-based strategies, Duress for Control, same with Claim, or Claim goes with Fatal Push, three Obnixilis, I mean... I think this is the best card to board in against the control decks because it dodges temporary lockdown, it dodges the creature-based sweepers like Verdict and Sunfall, and it makes two Planeswalkers, which is not the easiest thing for the control decks to deal with. One copy of Coligan's Command for mostly the Mirror Match, but you can board it in as an expensive Shatter against an Soul Artifact, two Horse for Phoenix, and two Damping Sphere for Lotus Field. So that is pretty much it for the deck list. I mean, Rotten Mouth Viper, if I'm going to keep trying, I know a lot of you guys in the comments have been asking me, you know, when are we going to see more Viper? Well, here it is. We got some more Viper and maybe there's more to come. In any case, I will see you back here in just a little bit for round number one. All right, Rakdos Snackrifice. This hand kind of sucks, but if they're giving me a, a claim target, then it's good. That's <laughs> second share for the last year. I see. I see. Beseech the Mirror for Scape Shift in the Golgari Crime deck. Um, wouldn't that just be a different deck, though? Like, I think there there probably is a version of that deck that is more kind of all in on Scape Shift, Lumra, Nissa, Aftermath Analyst. Or are you just saying, like, just one Scape Shift and a couple of Beseeches in the normal mid range shell? I could see that. I see. I, I mean, I see where the vision is for sure. I see where your head's up. That was a good draw. Very good draw. See, I don't know. Like, when I was playing that, that Golgari Crimes deck, I was much happier when I was playing the lower curve stuff. Like, I had I had a version of that deck that ended up having... Did they not get the memo? I had a version of that deck that ended up having... Uh, what did it... It was Forsaken Miner and Smuggler's Copter, and I thought that interaction was kind of cool. I'll read it out. Anonymous 
gifting a sub to grow some hair, please. Thank you for the gifted sub. Anonymous. Appreciate that. Surely anonymous, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know for a fact they were an Amalia player. Appreciate the gift that's up anonymous. Thank you. Uh, do I want the Parhelion in their hand? Yeah, I think I do. Mm -mm. I think the answer is always yes, right? Like, is there ever a situation you did you wouldn't want the Parhelion in their hand? I can't really think of one. Now, here's the question. Do you harvest or Thoughtseize, or you, do you Devil? I mean, it has to be Harvest or Thoughtseize, right? Uh, take this, do this. If they can hard cast it. Oh, sure, if they have, like, seven lands in play or whatever. Oh. Nerd 14. Kind of sucks that they have Bitter Triumph for the Devil. Can I bait this out of them somehow? Uh, what's the advantage of Abzan versus Martyr for Grease Fang? The green enablers, mostly Grizzly Salvage and Seder Wayfinder. Some of them don't play Wayfinder, but um, what's the other one? Witherbloom Command. Those are kind of the big green cards. All right, I'm going to do this. I don't want to play the devil into the triumph, basically, is what I'm saying. And then I'm probably going to go tap land second harvester. I feel like the only way that I can bait the triumph out of them is to animate den. Maybe. It's like a chance they kill this harvester. I, I wouldn't say it's very likely, but there is a chance. Hmm. Okay. That's another good green card. I, f I forgot about this card, actually. I mean, here's the thing about Grease Fang. The deck is very, very consistent, right? It's very, very, like, you have Cash Grab, Grizzly Salvage, you have a ton of good enablers. You're, you're, like, you're pretty consistently able to do the thing. The problem is you just cannot ever beat Phoenix in a million years. That's kind of why I think you probably can't play this deck. The Phoenix matchup is just, it's just, un, it's just untenable, you know. They just have too many ways to answer Grease Fang. On top of the fact that if people are playing Phoenix, they're more likely to have more Graveyard Hate. And if that's the case, then you get sides, like, you know what I mean? The Graveyard Hate, like, has some incidental value against you. There's a chance they might just not be able to crew this boat. So I'm going to do this. If I play Devil, it's just going to die if they can crew the boat, so... I think this is better. And depending on how much meta they tap to crew the boat, they might be dead next turn, or at least close. <laughs> Grease Fang Unbanned? I, I mean, if you're playing against Phoenix, maybe not. I would recommend dodging the Phoenix matchup. I mean, it's probably okay against a lot of other decks. But it, it's just too bad in the Phoenix, I think. All right, math time. Um, attack for one. They go to five. Dispute sack token four. Sack treasure three. Sack three bloods. But basically what I'm saying is that if I cast the try, if I cast the dispute proactively, they can just respond and kill the devil. And I have no cards left in my hand. Right. Because if I go devil dispute, hold a card in hand, I don't have a mana to use the blood token. So how do we do this? Do I just have to hope they fuck up and cast it end of turn? I mean, the thing is, I can take one more hit from the boat. 
<laughs> what if I just what if I just didn't cast anything? I guess maybe at that point, maybe it was better to fire up the den. I didn't think about that. Because here's the other problem. If I play Devil, Shockland pass, and they go, what they'll do is they just go, don't cast the Triumph, untap crew, attack, kill Devil. Right? I guess I could do that. I could go play Mayhem Devil, sack Blood, discard Blood Crypt they triumph in response then i can go respond sack blood discard this and then ping this twice hope they can't crew the boat maybe that's the best line well the problem with that is then i lose the dispute right discard land right but i'm saying i blood discard land ping target here, they respond, cast the triumph, target this, then I only have this left over, and if I want to kill this, then I have to discard the dispute. Maybe that's fine, though. Because then, even if I do that, then I'll still be drawing two cards off the blood token, which is, I think, fine. I think that's fine. Yeah, this is okay. I mean, it's not ideal, but... Uh, I don't know if those are good. I mean, this one's probably not very good. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to just hope they mess up, right? Is that is that ever a line? I almost wonder if if I didn't tank so long, like if I just made the confident play of just attack, shock, play, devil, pass very quickly, do you think that they play different? Do you think maybe they cast the, uh, the triumph end of turn? I don't know. Kind of depends on what level they're on. <laughs> Maybe I'm just psyching myself out. Okay. Do they have a way to crew the boat? Doesn't look like it. So now I can go familiar, drain them, slam viper. I played the familiar just so I could deal them a damage. I could have dend instead. A snake would be bad here. It's definitely not bad. Maybe, I don't know if that was better than de Denning, though. Okay, they're dead. Wild game. <laughs> I mean, that was a game where they just didn't have the, uh, they, they didn't find a way to crew the boat. All right, so Graveyard Hate, Coligan's Command, Push. Duress me? No, not Duress. Sphere bad, Hearse good. So these six good. Uh, claim. Claim is not very good against them, I think. Because the card you would want to claim is Grease Fang, but most of the time they're not playing Grease Fang until the turn that they can get something back. I'm going to trim one Viper, uh, which means I can trim one of these. Definitely not cutting Fatal Push. And that's kind of... I, I kind of want to keep all the ovens in because you need to guarantee that you have ways to turn on Revolt which oven is one of the, the cheapest ways you can do that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I was thinking one fable. El Jefe. Yeah, this ain't it. This ain't it. This is uh, not the hand that we are looking for, I'll tell you that much. This one, on the other hand, is the hand that we are looking for. That's why I like the snake so much. It dodges Lightning Axe. It's a huge part of the reason why the card is so good, or why I think it's so good. Mm, combat. Yeah, the, the fact that Snake dodges Fatal Push, Fiery Impulse, and Lightning Axe means that I, I, think, it's, I think it's legit. And these Rakdos mid-range decks usually only have two, maybe three, two mana removal spells to kill it, so they don't have a ton of ways to kill it. We're thinking about this hearse. Okay. Informant, Bankbuster, Informant, Courtyard, Swamp. This can't get artifacts, can it? Creature or land secured. The betting line at damage they take from their own lands this game stands at nine and a half. 
I'll take the under, but it's not by a lot. Actually, no, maybe I'll take the over. Nine and a half. I mean, they have, they started on double mana confluence. If it's over, chat, you have to gift 20 subs. How about that? That'll make up the rules. All right, we're at four now. Four secured. If it's under, you shit. Yes. What if they concede, though? How does that work? You're running Stake and Golgari Food Deck because it's amazing with Knight of Sweets Revenge. I we uh we played a little bit with Golgari Food with Snake last week, I think, and that YouTube video should be going up shortly. I think it's going up tomorrow. Uh I guess I'll have a second red source. El Fable. What a card, huh? What a hell of a card. If it wasn't, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for Nadu, this card would have won, what, seven Pro Tours in a row or something? All right, what are we at, six now? All right, Jack, keep track, six. Everybody type six. Six? Six. Oh, eight? Eight? <laughs> or at eight. So what you're saying is I'm going to get 20 subs. I mean, if they tap a single, they have to tap two more mana confluences. I will discard. Honestly, I'm good. I'm bing chilling. I'm going to start here. Take a peek at what they're working with. You set the line and say I would bet. I said chat. I didn't I didn't specify who in chat had to give the 20 subs. I just said somebody in chat. It could be anybody, you know. All right, trade's fine. Trade is fine. What's their hand again? Their hand is double Parhelion Bitter Triumph. It's not ideal. Near, near. We just gotta find those oilers. We gotta find the, those uh, those Saudi Arabian oil princes. Where are they at? Oilers, Machek. Hurst me. I could cast the dispute, but there's really not a lot of reason not to, or there's not a lot of reason to cast it. Uh, let's go here. El Jefe. So we know they have Triumph, right? Which means I don't crew the hearse. Crew the hearse, it's over. No, because we know they have Bitter Triumph. Oh, but it would force them because... Oh, right. So basically, if I crewed the hearse, I could have forced the 20 gifted. Huh, you're right. Okay, that was a small mistake. That was a, a calculated error on my part. Or actually, a miscalculated error. All right, opponent, I'm going to need you to tap these two mana confluences, please. Just for no apparent reason. Please and thank you. No particular reason. Please. I'm asking nicely. Scoop incoming. <laughs> Come on. I had it too. I could have forced them to cast the triumph. Okay, keep this. Put back meow meow. I mean, this is a turn three viper. Turn three viper, nice. And if it was under your shit, uh, I didn't say that. That that was not in the contract. Just Grease Fang again? Sure looks like it. So many Grease Fang players. Glaceon. Glaceon, thank you so much for the eight-month Reese. Welcome back, Glaceon. Appreciate the support. Okay, my opponent is cooked. Should attack first. 
Gonna get that one damage in. Opponent is officially cooked. Viper, my ass. The Viper has landed. I repeat, the Viper has landed. I hope they cast Skyclave Apparition. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the other one? Where Fox Bodyguard? <laughs> oh, I see. I see what we're doing here. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's not gonna do it. And they're playing Angels. I guess that means they're playing Angels, right? Can Angels beat this card? I'm not sure Angels can beat this card, because they, they can't Skyclave it. I mean, they can gain a bunch of life and maybe stay above water against a couple triggers, but... What's this? Draw Step Coco. Did we find what we're looking for? Uh, I think so, yeah. I mean, it's like the only deck that I can think of that would play Elf, White Cards, Collected Company, and Archon, right? I can't think of much else. It could just be a mid-range deck. I'm assuming Angels, but I, I think my sideboarding is probably not that much different between the two. Like, I still want those cards. And I think that's really it, right? I like that I can claim Archon and Sack at the Oven. It's kind of what I was thinking. I could see Shaving a Fable, just because expensive cards not as good against Archon, especially on the draw. They met a Thalia, too. Yeah, Claiming Elf is good. You can go Claim Elf. On turn two, you can go Claim Elf, play Black Source, float, use Elf for mana, play Dispute. Or even on turn one, you can Claim Elf, tap the Elf for mana, play Oven. I got one of these. Epicure probably is the worst card, but it, it does still enable fast vipers, though, so... I want to keep some of them. It's good. Can't complain. Not, like... Not a turn three viper type of hand, but... I'll settle. Are you having a good time, chat? You can't say no. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, all right, well. The only issue is there's not really a ton of tournaments to play, and that's, I think, a lot of people's complaints with Standard, is you just you just got to give the people a reason to play it. But I think that the, um, the Spotlight series is going to put a, a, a nice shining light on Standard, which I think will help the, uh, help the reach a little bit. It's, just, it's so much fun. Okay, Convoke. This matchup might be a little tough. I don't have any sweepers in my sideboard. It's my favorite standard deck. I like the Boros Tokens deck a lot. This is going to be a tough game. No, I did not sideboard Meat Hook. I didn't pay the Convoke tax, all right. I mean, now that they have removed Vein Ripper from the format, you're allowed to play with Mayhem Devil now, which I can appreciate. I'm a, I'm a big Mayhem Devil fan. Or Soft Life Gain. Yeah, that deck is cool with uh, Essence, Essence Channeler, Ruin Lurker, Bat, Amalia. That deck is cool. The one I, I like, I tried to build that deck, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to be more bat focused with uh, Dark Star Augur. That's what I wasn't sure. Oh, the song is for the Viper, I see. The song is good. He does have one of the best WWE intros. Like intro songs.
This works, right? I mean, they only they paid they spent one mana on their card, right? Here, okay, hear me out. When you when you cast a convoke spell, it should decrease the overall mana value by the amount of creatures that you use to cast it. Hmm. Okay, we can start here. Step one. Probably step two. Because I don't want to miss my land drop this turn. But maybe it's just better to play Harvester. Okay, land acquired. And... I guess we're just going to go Oven Cat, right? Yeah, I want to save the claim for Warden. I guess I don't need to because I have Fatal Push, but... It's kind of cool that I can use Claim on Warden, Activate it, and then Sack it. I don't know if I should be attacking, but kind of want to get a little aggressive. I don't want to give them a lot of time. Depending on what their next turn is, I mean, it's, it's going to be these two most likely, but if we can find a Mayhem Devil before they find, like, a Luxodon or a Recruiter, we might be able to clean up their board a little bit, because Mayhem Devil does a lot of work here. Right, yeah, exactly. I could trade here. So the reason to trade would be if they're going to go Warden Inspector, and my plan is to next turn use the Oven to sack the Warden, then I could just Oven sack Warden, get the food to get the cat back. Does that make sense? Or am I just spewing? I think it makes sense to me. Oh. They just didn't cast the Warden? Uh, Okay. Weird. Why would they not cast the Warden? Oven Vamp. I don't have to yet, though. Now they don't even have a good attack, though. Right. I'm going to play a little scared this turn. I think the reason... Well, no, I was going to say the reason they wouldn't attack is because they would go end step resolute, but they would at least still play this, right? Okay, they must have just misclicked. No, nah, they, they definitely just misclicked. What am I doing with my life? Probably this, just so I can get the cat back. I don't know if it's unplayable, but it seems interesting. Like, there might be some decks that want it, but... Yeah, no, I, I thought it just gave your whole team double strike. My bad. But I, I think the, the Necro decks are still playable without grief. But I'll give you an example. The way that I've built my Necro deck, just so I can... I'll, I'll show you the list. You can get a little sneak peek, sneak peek at tomorrow's stream. So we'll play that tomorrow. I am so dead. I am extremely dead. Nah, I, I thought about Soren, but I don't know if Soren is better. So the reason I wanted to play Shambling Guest over Soren was for those fast Necro draws. So it, it's it's a little bit different. It doesn't quite do the same thing. But Soren is very good with Soul Spike, so it might still be worth playing. We're just toast, right? Yeah, all right. Can't win that game. I mean, this matchup seems unwinnable without the sweepers. We can try. We can certainly try. But it's probably not going to be pretty. Maybe our only shot is Fast Viper. And if that's the case, no, I'm going to keep all the thought seizes. I'm going to trim a dispute. Do this. I think the only shot I have at beating them is a fast viper. Mm, this hand does not viper. This hand also doesn't viper, but I mean, it does stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, well, Zacharias, you need a sub for that one. That is that is a subscriber emote. 
And you can do that for free with a Twitch Prime if you have one. Recruiter, Epicure, Warden. Hmm. My hand... It's weird, right? Like, I don't want to take the Warden, but I kind of feel compelled to. Because if I don't take Warden, they're going to go... Like, they play Warden on one, I play Harvester on two. Then they go Epicure, Activate, and then my Harvester can't kill the Warden. So I think I'm kind of priced into taking it. Because otherwise I can't trade for it. I am just going to play this, though. So they played Den Epicure, took this. So their hand right now is two Vantage Recruiter. I now have zero formats for the best deck as my opponent taking 45 minute turns. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing, Glint? Do I think moving it back to a Cabal Copper style build would be a decent because Copper is plus Urborg? Well, well, I'm, it's funny you ask that because I also have that build. We're going to try both of these tomorrow. You didn't answer Merfolk? Well, I don't know if you want to hear my thoughts on Merfolk. Okay, so... Nope, I misclicked. God damn it. I mean, I guess it's fine. I meant to cast the Thoughtseize, but... It's actually not fine, because now they get to play the Recruiter next turn. He could choose the only one that can win with Merfolk. I don't know what it is. He's the, he's the only person that I ever see win with Merfolk. I mean, what do you think the top of the metagame is going to be? Boros Energy? Like, I, I can't imagine Merfolk is good against Boros. That would be my guesstimation. Yeah, so if if Boros Energy is the best deck, then I don't want to be playing Merfolk into that. Okay, that makes sense. That's why they didn't play the Recruiter. Maybe the only way, maybe the only way that um, Murfolk can beat Boros with the ring is to play their own ring decks. What if Murfolk played ring? I think I saw a, uh, I think I saw a Nikachu tweet discussing that. <laughs> yeah, right here. Boros Energy with four of the One Ring wins RCQ. If you're not running the One Ring, you might be doing something wrong. Maybe I should test the One Ring in Merfolk. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? I guess the issue is you just draw more blue shitters. You draw more two mana two twos. I don't know my best draw is here. They have no cards in hand. All right, do not draw a spell, please. Although I guess they have this, which makes it awkward. It's sad that to beat the One Ring, you need to run your own. I, well, I mean, that's kind of why Boros has been playing the One Ring. I mean, over the over the past couple of weeks, you know, people have kind of realized that the best way to beat Boros is to play the Ring, and the best way for Boros to answer people playing the Ring is just play their own rings. It's just kind of the format we're in, you know. It is what it is. Okay, we're definitely not block sacking, right? And I'm not trading. I'm just taking 10. Yeah, I think I'm taking 10, right? I don't think I can win if I trade. And I also don't think I can win if I block sack, so... I mean, you ever been at one life before? I live my whole life at one life. Okay, steal, sack, kill, food. Uh, we can blood first. I really want to find fatal push. Let's blood first. Well, actually, hold on. Is there a way... Can I blood can I blood on their turn to kill the den? Unless I sacrifice the Mayhem Devil, but I can't do that. Yeah. 
So we have to go here. Yeah, this is the turn that maybe I trade the den for the devil. Because we go here, attack for two, sack the epicure, kill a token. Uh, well, no, then we still die, right? Because if I sack food, go to four. Oh, but I can ping. Okay, so I trade here, ping this, take two, go to two, is what you're saying. So I think I should play the land in that case. Because that's better if I hit a land for den. Because there's a chance I might want to fire up den next turn. I think. But I think we have, we have to trade for the den this turn, which kind of sucks. It's kind of no way around it. Meow, meow, meow. I was going to get into MTGO for standard. How's the meta bend versus arena? I have not played a single game of... I haven't played any standard on, on MTGO, so I'm not exactly sure how different it is. Don't let but how am I not letting him attack? What do you what do you mean? What do you want me to do? Oh, you want to be to sack the devil to the oven. Oh. Which is the same thing as trade it. Yeah, okay. I see I see what you're saying now. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. It's effectively the same thing, right? Because I'm at one. I sack food, go to four, ping, tap here, sack this, kill. It's the same thing, right? Oh, it's the same thing, but I'm plus one food. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, they said it couldn't be done. World's greatest comeback. It would be nice if I had extra food in play. Hold. This would be an insane game to win. What are you tapping four mana for? Stop. Don't don't tap four mana. Oh no. That kills us exactly. Because we can go block sack. Uh, ah! <laughs> Damn it. Okay, well, in my defense, even if I had an extra food in play, it didn't matter. Even if I was plus one food, I still would have died there. Yeganta. El jefe. We'll find black mana. It was it was kind of sad. I'm I'm a little sad about it. What about Yogmoth? In terms of viability in the new metagame? Is Yogmoth good against Boros? I feel like I've never seen that matchup play out before. I would imagine it's not bad, right? Yogmoth against the Ocelot Ride deck. Okay, that is a black card. That is not what I wanted to draw. You own 200 Punishing Fires. Why is it still banned? Uh, for the same reason that Inverter is still banned, then I own 40 copies of that card. Bro, if they ever unban Inverter, I'm, I'm taking a trip. I'm going to the Bahamas. Okay, Black Source located. We just hope they don't have Lockdown. I mean, these decks don't usually have Lockdown main deck, right? I'm not playing around it. They don't have lockdown. You can't you can't convince me they do. Well, I mean I could cast Thoughtsies, right? I have a way to beat it. But I'm just kind of assuming they don't have it this turn. Okay, that I'm okay with. That I am okay with. Yeah, that's a good point. Although you could even say there, Pike, like the young wolf blocks comes back as a two two and then blocks and then blocks profitably the next turn. They do they are up a token, so I wish I could know their hand. <laughs> I wish there was an opportunity for me to cast this Thoughtsies before the Fable trigger to know if I want the second one. I'm just gonna assume that I need both, but You would throw both away? That can't be right. 
That there's no way that can't be right. No shot, right? I could have done that, actually. I could have disputed in response to the trigger. And then if I dispute into a land, then I can throw that away. That's a good point. Oh. Oh, well then. Okay, well, let's cast one of these, at least. <laughs> Just looking at a hand that's... Six drop, four drop, four drop, four drop, four drop, five drop. What are we what are we doing with our lives? I don't what is what is even the best card in their hand? I don't even know what the answer to that question is. Is it discontinuity? Nah, probably not. Yeah, it's a fairy makes sense. I don't really care about settle. I'm not gonna cast the second thoughtsies though. Mostly because I want to save the treasure for the Mayhem Devil turn. I think what's going to happen this game is I'm going to wait to play the Devil until this until this has not Summoning Sickness. I'm just going to try to one-shot them. It's my plan, at least. Okay. I don't know if that helps. Uh, let's go to combat. I just want the treasure. And then I can also save the Thoughtsies for next turn, for the turn that I just go for the big kill. Oh, that's true. They can time walk me next turn. Maybe I have to take this then? Yeah, I do, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I have to... Well, I guess I should have taken the other one last turn, huh? Uh... I'm going to take one of them because I don't want to get time walked. And everybody say hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the team, Hefe. I will have you know, Ben, that I've beaten Blue White twice today, okay? This is this is new and improved Doom Wake. I do think Tef was the right call last turn, but I did get punished by them drawing a second discontinuity. have ended stream if you lost yeah that is probably true okay they didn't draw an untapped land which is good so unless the other card from the deluge or the their draw step was an interaction spell they're just dead right mega dead i mean i'm going for it i ain't not going for it I don't, how many count? How many counter spells did these Lotus Field decks play? Not that many, right? Could have get lost. All right, uh, I'm gonna try to kill you. <laughs> this is way more than 15 damage. I'll tell you that much. Did they play any? Uh, they might not. Yeah, I don't care about that. I will choose to not pay. No, I said no. Pay your taxes? No, I don't want to. Why do you, why do you, do I look like the do I look like the type of person that would pay their taxes? What what could possibly give you the idea or the inclination that I would ever consider paying my taxes? Bro, you're dead. You dead dead. You dead dead. <laughs> Clip and ship to the IRS. I don't think that a, uh, a Twitch stream is a legally binding contract. I don't think it is. I could be mistaken, but... <laughs> They're going to wait till they go all the way down to one and then have a piece of interaction. 
What are you doing? Just concede. You did. What is this? Uh, okay. That doesn't do it, though. Because then they just died at the trigger end of turn, right? I knew they had that, but it wasn't good enough. Can also just do this. <laughs> that is also a legal play. Yeah, the treasure also. I'll kill the Emperor for, for good measure. You gotta stack it right to make sure the Emperor dies before they take lethal. Okay, duress me... Uh, no. Yes, absolutely. You kidding me? Opnik's good. Maybe Coligan's command. Maybe go blank. Uh, push bad. So here's the question. How many, how many, or how much, if any, do you want to keep in for the stupid 1-3? I think the answer is zero, but... You want to cut Snake against them? I think Snake is one of my better cards now. I could trim one, I guess. It is not great against... It's not. It's awkward against temporary lockdown. Because, especially on the draw, you play a bunch of cheap stuff, and they'd lock down the turn before you're about to play Viper. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I'm pretty sure that Ob Nixless is my best card. By far. Quads, by the way. It's a good poker hand. Yeah, that is true. If they counter the ETB, the attack trigger is much worse. That's a good point. I'm not going to five. This hand sucks, but... I feel like Yigra food is insanely well positioned right now. I kind of want to try a version that has Yigra and Mayhem Devil. Because when I played the Yigra decks, I really, really missed having Mayhem Devil, and I wonder if we can play both. Maybe it's the mana's a little sketchy, but you have Gilded Goose to fix your mana, so it's probably fine, right? I don't know if I've seen a lot of gen lists. I'd have to take a look. But that's kind of where I want to be. I want to try I want to try being a gen deck. What is this? What? What? Four mana tap, exile. Each player chooses six la sex lands they control. Destroy all other permanents. Activate only as a sorcery. All right, well. Something. That is also something. I'm gonna I will happily trade Fable for Silex, I think. Problem is the rest of their cards kinda suck. Take this. Cause that's the only card that answers the den. Yeah, like this. Basically, I'm gonna let them I'm gonna let them trade the Silex for the Fable as a one for one trade, and then I'm just gonna try to cook them with the den. I think it's the plan. Like, what are they going to do? Not pop the Silex and let me discard two cards? They kind of have to. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to discard both lands, I think. Can I have one of those lands back, please? Okay, that might have been a bad idea. Perhaps I, I was a little overzealous there. They played Hallowed Fountain. I mean, they shocked, so they drew something. Why did I discard two lands? That was stupid. You gonna veto this? A little veto action. A little Danny DeVito. I'm thinking about it. They're 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 not sure what to cast right now. They are really not sure. All right, Danny Devito resolves. So now what? You know they have no more lies. Do we just dispute sack treasure? Try to find a land. 
Probably. Well, that's kind of best possible, right? Oh, they were thinking about playing the Emperor that turn? Got it, okay. That worked out pretty well for me. So now if they pop the Silex, we can just fire up the Den if we can find a land. Really wish I didn't discard two of those lands. I think maybe the correct play was discard Land Oven. Maybe that was better. This song is nice. I forgot who requested it. Alright, Silex down. I have been blasted. Don't take that out of context, please. So the last card is No More Lies. I could Fable, but... Nah, that was stupid. I should have Fabled. In my head, I wanted the double spell there, but Fable was way better. I could have went Fable Oven. All right, I'm going to ask you very nicely, very, very nicely, Raphael WS, please do not have, uh, please do not have drawn another copy of Wandering Emperor. Eh, okay, I can find March. I could also not find March and they could take 10 damage, which would be nice. Also, I'm going to tell you right now, because I know that you're, you're, you, I know you, you're, you're dying to know the, the answer to this question. I am not playing around Settled Wreckage the entire match. It's just not happening. All right. Looks like they've located the March. Yeah, I'm not playing around Settle. It's just I don't have it in. It's not in my blood to play around that card. Jose, you missed it earlier. I beat Blue White twice today. All right, don't settle me, bro. Don't you dare settle me. Settle the wreckage is banned for this turn and this turn only. Really? Okay, I'm not playing Fable into No More Lies. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I mean, the way that this game played out, it actually kind of worked out me playing the Double Harvester instead of the Fable that one turn. It just gets them dead so much faster. Actually, no, I wouldn't pay, right? I would just let it go and then play Fable. Okay. Yeah, if they if they normalized, I would just say okay and then play Fable. Combat. I would like to proceed to the combat phase. It's going to be an attack. Oh, okay. Well, that works. Alrighty. Last round. Oh, the other, the Twitch Turbo too. I get a cut of that too. So if you have Twitch Turbo, which I actually, I, I have Twitch Turbo too. It's really good. It's a good service. Uh, not quite. Close, but no cigar. I mean, I kind of wanted to keep that hand, but I'll go to five. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's put back... I'm going to keep two lands. Harvester, Thoughtseize, Epicure, maybe? Do it like this. The claim is not very good, but that'll wait a sack the creature, so... Can Tyvar Sacrifice be a thing again? I wonder, now that you mentioned that, I wonder if you could play Tyvar Sacrifice with the Yigra stuff. So the uh, the older Tyvar Sacrifice decks didn't play... Um, they didn't play Cauldron Familiar, but I wonder if they could. Yeah, that could be a cool idea. Stashed Skeleton... I don't know why I didn't thought he's on one. So I'm stupid, that's why.
Yeah, they're probably transmogrifying, right? But why do they not have Gigantha? That's what I'm curious. We have to do this, right? I'll tell you what I'm not taking. Okay, okay, okay. Let him cook. Let him cook. They have a fountain port, a blood crypt, and a Traxa. Oh, maybe they're creativity instead of transmogrify. No, because they wouldn't have Bankbuster, right? So they have to be transmogrify. What other double red card would they play? Like Brotherhood's End, maybe? Okay, they discarded Blood Crypt, the Traxa, played Fan Port. Makes sense. Rude. But I do have two good cards, which is nice. Yeah, main deck Brotherhoods would be kind of weird. No, I have two good cards. I now have no good cards. All right, they are also Hellbent, to be fair. So give me a Mayhem Devil. I'll accept. I don't even know if they if they made that information public. I think my plan is Jeff. Go here, and then attack, no trade, take four, go to eight, hope to rip and untap land, and then go sack harvester, kill one of these, play Jeff. Or, sorry, kill this, not kill one of these. I have to kill the Fable. But I can't not play the Blood Tithe Harvester that turn, because I, I really need to kill this Reflection. All right, big draw, big draw, big draw. Is that good? I mean, it's something, right? Could be worse. I might have to trade for one of the skeleton tokens. I definitely have to do this. That's for sure. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is just go Fable Pass and try to double block one of these. But these things are like pretty good clocks. So hopefully I can trade for what trade this for one of them. Oh. Interesting. Kind of surprised they're doing that. Hmm. I might discard Gigantha. I could have also discarded Gigantha main phase. And then I could find Mayhem Devil. And then the Mayhem Devil could have killed one of the uh, the skeleton tokens. Could have been something too. Yeah, I don't know if I have time for this Gigantha. I do get to flip both of these. Can they do this at any time? No, only sorcery. Okay, good. Um, it's actually not the worst. Because that's good if they go for... If they, like, if they tutor for transmogrify, then having the fatal push is nice. Oh, I messed up. I should have cast dispute with the, uh, the trigger on the stack. I always forget to do that. Because then if you draw bad cards off the of dispute, you can discard those to the fable. Yeah, like that. Exactly like that. It's almost like I knew it was going to happen. All right. You can start getting in with the hive next turn. Yeah, Fountain Port does look kind of sweet in their deck. What I, what I didn't realize about Fountain Port was how good it was with Case, because so normally when you play this card, they usually are not going to want to kill the, the Skeleton Token, because then they, you just get to flip this. But if you curve Case into turn three Fountain Port, you can just go Fountain Port, sack the token, and then immediately flip the Case, which is a cool line that I really did not consider. 
that is that is a really cool synergy. That's some really cool synergy. All right, which one do you want? Take your pick. Right, now they know they can't go for Transmogrify. This is a weird game. Okay. Mm, that does make sense. Uh, am I a fatal pushing the shaman token is the question. Mm, probably. I mean, they know about the fatal push, and I kind of want to maybe use the hive next turn, I think. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to save the hive. Or sorry, save the fatal push for if they have transmogrify. This is a weird game. Lay me on a prayer. They have a DT in play. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe that was stupid. That might have been bad. Mr. Hot Dog, thank you for the 17 month reset. Appreciate that, Hot Dog. Welcome back. Yeah. Okay, maybe I should have helped the Fatal Push. That was kind of bad, right? Yeah, that might have been bad. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, we're dead. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, what are we boarding against? Rakdos Transmogrify. All right, duress good. Claim bad for sure. Claim out. Uh, push, maybe? Hearse bad. Key command. Command could be good because they have Bank Buster. And maybe the fourth copy of Fatal Push, but that might be a little too much. Let's just do something like this. I think I like this. All right, play first. Yaganta. Yeah, that's true. They might play Briefcase. Uh, this hand's good. Oven, Cat, Mayhem Devil. Not sure exactly how good Fatal Push is, but... I think I'm going to lead with Oven. These decks sometimes have Torch the Tower, and I don't want them to Torch the Familiar. Okay, they have a Thoughtseize. Hmm. I think Push seems good. Yeah, but do I want four? Four seems kind of like a lot, no? Like, is it a card that I want to draw two of? Maybe it is. I could be willing to. I could be willing to believe that that's correct. And it's nice that even if I draw two of them, I can still use one on a fable, which is nice. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. What they do? They took. A devil. Go back at this back. Yeah, that is a good point. I think maybe that maybe I'm just used to playing against indomitable creativity, and that's kind of why I don't like Fatal Push as much, but it is much better against Transmogrify specifically. Because they don't have um they can't like play around Fatal Push in that same way. So it, it is probably a little bit better against these decks. But like here, I think I have to cast the Fatal Push. Well, no. I think what I'm going to do is just sack Familiar, keep it in the graveyard, and then if I draw land, just yeah, then I can just kill the Shaman token. So I think it's better to do it this way. Go pink here. Get this back. Trigger here. Sack this. Ping this. And then just tack for one. 
I feel like this is better. <laughs> you can play a solid mid range play too. Right. That's that's the that's the reason I don't think you want to go kind of overboard with the cheap removal. Like you can't really afford to have that be your entire plan. But I think some of that is good, you know. And like it's one of those matchups you can't give them infinite time. Like you do you need to try and kill them, you know. Okay, well. <laughs> they have officially died. We could try it on the draw though. I think it makes more sense on the draw. I don't know if Viper is the cut, but it does kind of make sense. It all comes down to this. Thoughtseize, Blood Tithe Harvester, Mayhem Devil. I think this is good enough. Not as much interaction as I would like to. Like no Fatal Push and Double Devil's kind of awkward, but Thoughtseize Harvester I think is good enough. How do I think the metagame will shape up post-ban? So I think the big winners from this are Convoke, Is It Phoenix, and Mono Green. I think those are like the three very clear big winners. Um, Rakdos Midrange is certainly going to be a good deck too. Those are those are kind of like the... That's where I see the top of the metagame shaping out. This is a tough hand of Thoughtseize. A really tough hand of Thoughtseize. I mean, part of me just kind of thinks I have to take Transmogrify, right? And just let them play the fair game and hope that Harvester Devil can beat their fair game. Because I can't really keep them off curve, right? If I take Bankbuster, they have this. I mean, I guess I can take Fable, but I don't have a clear answer to the Transmogrify, so it's kind of why I think I have to do that. Let me do this. No blocks. No blocks. Yeah, but I really need to find a land here. Land me. Puck. <laughs> well, now it's bad. I still have Bank Buster. So we just go duress. Jesus. Have to take that, right? And go here. Yeah, I mean, not drawing land there. We're just cooked, right? Uh, 22, which I think is, is standard for Recta Sacrifice. I think 23 is a bit too much. Yeah, maybe that was better. Cycle Cat. And then that's even better if I get, like, if I draw a uh, Hive or a Den. Do I think Phoenix is leaving tier one ish territory? I think so, yeah. I mean, it, I think it is the clear, I think it's the clear deck to beat right now. Brother, ugh. Brother, what's that? Brother, I don't want that. If I don't draw land this turn, we can probably pack it in. Make me sacrifice a creature? Really? Okay. Huh. Oh, because they didn't want to discard the land of the blood, the bank buster. Okay, hold. Uh, now what? So their last card is bank buster. Let's play Fable, right? And then discard Harvester when they plus Liliana. Next turn, we can go attack, make a treasure, use treasure, blood, kill Liliana. Devil's highest upside. I think I think Fable's just better, though. Because Fable gives us another thing to do with the devil next turn. I guess what you're saying is the upside would be if I draw untapped land, then I can go second devil blood, which is two, which is two, which is two pings. But that's the same thing as just going uh, attack and then two pings with the treasure, right? Because treasure blood is still two pings. So I think it's the same either way. We played boats earlier today, Ryumi. It felt fine. We ended up going three and two. It felt, you know mid not super great not super bad i think the list that i played was kind of not great though i had main deck hearse and you probably don't want to play that 
Hmm. Am I discarding Den of the Bugbear? Yeah, because I really just want to find an oven. So, what is the most important thing to kill here? Yeah, we, we played that deck earlier, Black. It was fine. I think that the version I played needs a little bit of work. I didn't like the uh, the list that's on the Mox Field. I didn't like the Hunter's Talents or the main deck curses. Those I think I want to switch out. Yeah, that was my thought, too. I think it's Liliana. So we have to go Devil, Attack, and then Loot the Dispute. I think. We become the walking dead. I'm going to let them go to blocks first. Okay, we're trading. Interesting. Okay, so the trade happens. And then we go here. Ping. We keep devil, right? Well, hold on. Do we keep devil? What if I kept dispute? That's actually kind of close. No, it's... Oh, it, it is close, right? All right, 19. I actually think I'm going to keep... No, because they're so likely to find a removal spell. I'm going to do this. I, I was thinking that I want the dispute the turn after I flip the fable because I'll already have the devil in play. Right? So I'll have, like... This is kind of redundant if they don't... But it is better if they find a removal spell for this because this is how I'm going to kill them, right? So they draw a removal spell this turn. The next turn we go flip, play second devil, and set up for kill the next turn. It's kind of close. Eh, okay. Did your fable? Okay. They're kind of sort of racing us in a weird way, too. Guess we get a nine. It's our best draw here. Not that. I mean, <laughs> what if we just slam the Viper? Do I win that race? Upgrade Devil the Viper. Well, I would have to sack both. Right? I'd have to go sack Devil Fable. And then I could deal two to the Shaman token. Does Boros do... What does Boros do versus Hapatra and Yogg on the board? Yeah, I mean, like, I think the Yogg-Moth matchup is, is... I think Yogg-Moth is probably favored against Boros. I don't know. I, I feel like it's better to just pass and try to copy Devil next turn. Although, I, how many removal spells do they even have for Viper? I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. Look, I don't know if it's right, but... I don't know if it's right. Wait... What? Uh Is it because I is it because I misordered? No, cuz I clicked on them in the, in the wrong order. Cuz I think I had to click on the fable first, right? Cuz you sacrifice the fable then the devil. Oh, that's so bad. Cuz I really wanted to kill this. I guess we're going upstairs now. I mean, I don't want them to flip the snake, right? Or flip the skeleton thing. Against the go to right clicked on them. Well, if it is, then why wouldn't it work like that? Because if I clicked on Fable, then clicked on Devil, it like I should get two sacrifices, right? Unless it's bugged. Okay, well, we were going to lose anyways. <laughs> no matter what we drew, we were going to lose to that. Good beats. I feel like it might be bug then, because I'm pretty sure I should get two regardless, right? So that played out just as we expected, you know, with Rakdos Sacrifice, kind of the matchup spread that you would expect ended up, you know, picking up four wins and one loss. 
deck was good. I don't think there's a ton I would want to change about this particular list. Maybe the format is getting to a point where you want to play less claim the firstborn, like maybe you want to trim the, the second copy, potentially to make room for the fourth fatal push. The other thing that I wanted to kind of talk about in the outro here is the, you know, I mentioned the scavenger's talent in the intro. I like that card, but I don't exactly know what I would really decide to cut for it. I think you can trim into maybe some of the interaction, like maybe you go less on Fatal Push Thoughtseize, you can trim an Epicure, maybe that's where the claims could go. But Scavenger's Talent does kind of play nicely with Viper, so I wouldn't necessarily want to cut Talent for Viper, or Viper for Talent rather, excuse me. I kind of want to play them both together, so that's something worth considering. At the end of the day, I think the Jun version is a little bit better, where your top end of Yigra just wins the game on the spot most of the time. And what's really nice about Yigra which Viper kind of does this as well with talent. You play these games with talent where you just kind of turbo level it. You just play it, level it up, level it up, level it up. And then you get to a spot where you start self milling yourself to find the combo pieces that you're missing. And what's nice about talent is it can mill over the Yigra and then you can sacrifice three things to get the Yigra back. And then that, you know, represents a kill all in and of itself. You can sort of do that with Viper, right? Where you mill over Viper and then talent can get it back but it doesn't just end the game on the spot like Yigra does. So it might be worth playing Yigra over the Viper. Time will tell on that. But if you enjoyed the video, I appreciate you all uh, tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next one.